Now, if you're receiving constant barrage of just mundane things, then you know straight away what kind of spirit is being connected to, don't you? If you're receiving more of a barrage of influencing you morally, then you know that maybe the spirit is, is a high spirit. If you're not receiving a barrage at all, then you know that's probably the higher spirit. Because the higher spirit would never barrage you or you know, be overt in their influence of you. Uh, trying to control you, and so you know that it would even be a higher spirit. Because a higher spirit, one of the laws of divine love, is a law of free will. And a higher spirit will never want to influence your free will, negatively or positively. Right? They'll just want to tell you the choices you have, and allow you to make the choice. So they are the higher spirits. So can you see how just knowing the hierarchy of laws, Straight away, you can also determine what kind of spirit you're talking to. However, from an intellectual perspective, that all sounds fine. But do you know that a person on the first sphere can just start using all of the terminology of a seventh sphere spirit? And if you can't feel their emotional condition, you won't be able to tell the difference. So it's like somebody reading up on divine love, learning all the terminology, who's a murderer, coming inside of here just for the point of view of wanting to knock off a few of you, and, and actually using these to create, create connections with you. That's, a spirit can do that. And a person on earth could do it too, it's true. Of course I don't know why they probably want to do it, but they could do it. And this is the problem for all of us is I can tell you all the hierarchical laws of the universe and how they all work and what kind of truths are the highest truths. But if you can't feel the emotional condition, if you can't feel the soul condition of the person connecting with you, you can receive all sorts of information from people masquerading as the people you're thinking you're talking to. Now right at the moment there are literally hundreds of thousands of mediums on earth talking to Jesus. And the majority of them have no conversation with Jesus. They're actually talking to spirits who are masquerading as me. The reason why those spirits want to do that is because straight away many of them will listen. And straight away a rapport can develop. Does that make sense? And this happens with my mother Mary, it happens with and other spirits all the time. There are literally hundreds of thousands of mediums being deluded because they can't tell the soul condition of the spirit talking to them. And when the person just uses the terminology that connects, so like for, for many of these spirits, all they've got to do is read the Bible, which by the way you can do in a few seconds in the spirit world. You can remember everything. And then I can just reuse that terminology over and over again with whomever I'm connecting to. So I could go along to a person who's a really devoted Catholic, for example, who's a medium, and I could present myself as Jesus, start talking to them using the terminology that I read in the Bible, and is that person going to be able to tell the difference? Well, if their soul condition isn't higher than the spirits, they will not be able to tell the difference. So can you see what's going on for many? So, all the laws are great, knowing them here is great, but it's only when we start to feel them emotionally. It's only when you have the ability as a spirit to feel the emotional and spiritual condition, the soul condition of the person communicating with you, that you will be able to know the difference. That's a very important piece of information to know, isn't it, as a medium. So in other words, if I refuse to open up myself emotionally as a medium, I will not ever be able to tell the difference of someone who's masquerading as the person or actually the person. Now I've had many, many conversations in the last five years with mediums where they have not been able to tell who they're actually speaking to. I'll give you an example. I had a conversation with a lady in the USA. And she had two spirits come to her. They called themselves Peter and Gabriel. The Apostle Peter and the 
Archangel Gabriel. And this is actually written down in that reincarnation information that I presented. And they presented themselves as Peter, Apostle Peter and Archangel Gabriel because it meant that she would listen to them. And they presented a lot of very good material on the natural love path. So they weren't malevolent spirits, they were actually, I felt they were in the second or third sphere of the spirit world. On the natural love path. And the reason why they allowed her to continue in her belief that they were someone that they weren't was because they wanted the rapport with her to teach these truths. The way they looked upon it was that their desire was pure to teach more moral truths on the earth. And so what they did was they, they allowed the medium to continue in her belief rather than telling her the truth. Now when we had the discussion and I said, well actually they're not the Apostle Peter and the Archangel Gabriel, they, she actually confronted them about that and they admitted to her that they weren't. Now, if you've been channeling a spirit for five or six or seven, ten years, who have said to be one person, and then you find out for that five to ten years they've been lying to you, or not so much lying to you, but just not telling you the truth, how would you feel? Well, she felt quite upset. Now, what I tried to do is encourage her to try some experiments, which she did try, and they did too. And eventually what happened is these spirits got onto the Divine Love Path. Now they are in a much better condition. But because she was so affected by the fact that they'd lied to her, she didn't want to talk to them anymore. And after lots and lots of encouragement, I still am not sure whether she, want, she is talking to them or not. 